At this point, which is the end of the third episode, it's pretty safe to assume that Sakuta will solve the problem of each of the girls in the opening credits. It's impossible for me not to draw parallels between this and the Monogatari when it actually has the exact same format as Baki Monogatari. Mini arcs for each of the girls that will eventually have their puberty syndrome solved. But there's a core difference. The Monogatari series stands by the phrase no one can save you but yourself. And so far, Seishun Butayaro doesn't follow that philosophy. Mei was a victim of a pseudoscientific disease outside of her control. She needed someone to save her and make her existence known again because she couldn't do anything herself. So I guess it stands by the phrase we should help each other or we should ask for help if needed, I don't know. They do share a lot of similarities, which makes me happy because I'm a huge fan of the Monogatari series and I'm open to anything that resembles it. That's a tiny reason for why I love this show so far, but I'm also a bit worried that it might feel too alike. Especially with Shoko Makinohara, the girl that had quite a few appearances throughout the opening credits and has had an appearance in one of the episodes. She does seem to resemble Hanekawa from the Monogatari series in a way. Shoko, like Hanekawa, was the girl from before the story began. And there was a faction from the main character that never turned into anything much like in Hanekawa's case. She may make an appearance and inspire some romantic insecurity in Mai, the same way Hanekawa did with Senjogahara. There are plenty of small parallels that can be pointed out, such as the short arcs, the resembles between Mai and Sergio Gahara, their banter, the five girls, the puberty syndrome, and so on. But I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to focus on the principle of Schrodinger's cat and how it's portrayed in the show, and also the puberty syndrome in Mai's case. Throughout my rewatch of those three episodes, which I'm going to call them Mai's arc, I keep asking myself what was the reason behind Mai's puberty syndrome? Why did it happen to her? What was her problem? It seemed as though she was punished for not acting anymore, which didn't necessarily make a lot of sense, and I was constantly looking for the message behind it. For example, I'm going to mention the Monogatari again, it just to make my point clear and it's for the last time, I swear. In Senjo Gahara's arc, Hitagi Krab, the message was that we can't run away from our problems as they have consequences. I was linking the principle of Schrodinger's cat directly to Mai alone, leaving Sakuta aside because I thought it's Mai's problem. But I was wrong. The Schrodinger's cat is a symbol of Mai and Sakuta's relationship. Futaba explains that the cat is dead and alive until someone opens the box and sees for themselves, in other words, observes for themselves. But before that happens, one can only assume if the cat is dead or alive. There are only possibilities. So at what point does this stop and the outcome becomes one of the two? Now, if you keep the principle in mind and look at their relationship, once they met and felt this strange attraction to each other, which never went further than this banter, the principle of Schrodinger's cat was in progress. Neither of them knew what their relationship was. Were they just friends? Were they staying together because they've been through a similar experience? It was unknown to them. Neither of them knew if the cat in the box was dead or alive. So in other words, the cat in the box is their relationship. Sakuta always exaggerates his admiration towards Mai, which is perceived as teasing, leaving Mai uncertain of how Sakuta feels about her. In the same vein, Mai's aggressive words and teasing cover up any leak of feelings she may have for Sakuta. They are uncertain of how each other feels and so they can only pick hints and guess something for themselves. So at what point does this stop and the outcome becomes one of the two? Do they love each other or not? The box is opened in the study session night before the final exams, when Mai teaches Sakuta the homophone difference between one of the kanji. That was the moment when both of them 
express their feelings through self-sacrificial deeds. Sakuta forced himself to stay awake in order not to forget her, while Mei forced him to stop that destructive behavior by giving him sleeping pills even though it means she would be alone. Each is willing to suffer so the other doesn't have to. It was now clear that the cat was still alive, which means they love each other. That cringe confession scene was Sakuta finally being clear and honest, telling Mai that he loves her in front of everyone from the school. He wasn't hiding behind his words anymore, he was ready to let Mai know how he truly feels. Mai responded to his confession and we can say that they become a couple. All in all, it's a very neat case of symbolism, there to underline a development between two characters. Now, as for why she was affected by the puberty syndrome and became invisible, it's a bit of a different story, with a message behind it that it's not quite clear. Mai was a popular child actress for the majority of her life. She was pushed into all kinds of things, some of which she wasn't comfortable with. As any popular actress, she was bombarded with attention and was devoid of her privacy, so her decision to quit was in a way justified. She entered the school in the middle of the year, where everyone knew her but the already built social circles did not try to include or even accept her. People were aware of her, but they just kept going along with the atmosphere. And I think that because she was still in the shadow of her actress self, the attention didn't stop even though she wasn't accepted. At that point she wished to become invisible to everyone and that's where the puberty syndrome took over. As Futaba says, Mai became the atmosphere in the school which led to everyone ignoring her. However, due to the puberty syndrome, the ignoring continues outside of the school because everyone loves to read the atmosphere, take hints from it and act accordingly. Therefore, everyone ends up ignoring her, which led to her being in a state where her existence is about to be erased because no one observes her. Then we have Sakuta, who tries to address the root of the problem by making everyone in the school who are subconsciously ignoring Mai to notice her by confessing to the whole school, making Mai come back into existence because she is being observed again. As for the message, when Sakuta confronts Mai about her decision to quit acting, she seems to regret it and wants to return to acting. It appears she wasn't true to herself and she was just angry at her mother. And I'll let you interpret this scene for yourself. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really like this show, that's why I made a second video on it. I think it has great potential and there's a lot more to be seen. Thank you once again and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.